Today's challenge, a good dog gone rogue. He's an absolute nightmare. Ted, stop! Worst case scenario, rehome him. And I dread to think what it would do to Jane. I need him to stay in my life. In Kent, on a not-so-quiet street... <laughs> Stop! Jane and Mike share their home with a cavapoochon called Teddy. But he's ruining their lives. There is no way he can be left on his own. We are 100% in doggy prison. <laughs> And that's because this crossbreed poodle... Stop! Good boy. Good boy. ..is acting out in a big way. He doesn't listen to us. Stop! His barking is on another level. The seagulls, the wind, children. He's even guilty of grand theft. He'll steal anything. Ted, stop! To try and stop me from going through that door. Stop! It's gone from joy to almost misery, I would say. Though Teddy wasn't always the wayward dog you see today. Just one year ago, he was quite literally Jane's saviour. I was told I had um, cancer for the second time in 10 months and I was going to have to go through chemotherapy and radiotherapy. When we heard the news, I still can't find the words. It just shook me to pieces. Then, into their lives came Teddy. Instantly, Jane and this young pup were inseparable. When I was going through chemo, he was the reason I was getting up. I had to get up. When I came home from work, she looked tired, but she had a smile on her face because the dog was on her lap. <laughs> I think that helped with my recovery. <laughs> Sorry, still very raw. Now in remission, Jane's reclaiming her old life and is back at work, but Teddy's showing signs of separation anxiety. Worst case scenario, we have to rehome him and I dread to think what it would do to Jane. I need him to stay in my life, in our life. Yeah. I need him to be a full part of the family. Unfortunately, separation anxiety is a really common behaviour problem in dogs, especially now that people are returning back to work after being home for so long. But there are ways to relieve this anxiety and I really hope they work with Teddy. Hello. Hi. 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 Nice to meet you. Hello. Hello. Isn't he gorgeous? Teddy's good looks and curls aren't the problem. This is. OK. Teddy? I see. OK. And just like that, he's off. He barks all the time at everything. Any slight noise that triggers him off, and he's just bark, bark, bark. Now, I just saw him get up and run out. I didn't hear a noise. No. But he did. No. Yeah. He could be laying in that basket in his bed, and it could, to us, be dead quiet, and all of a sudden, he's gone full yeah. help. Yeah, And OK. Barking at the top of his okay. little voice. He, he was on my lap there, oh. heard something, and he was gone. His, his nail caught me, and that's and We didn't yesterday. hear anything. And, and then he'll just sniff and bark around an area. That worries me, because all dogs bark. Yeah. That's just normal, but not constantly. But while the barking's almost unbearable, the problems really begin when Jane tries to go to work. What is he like when you leave? Oh, he's an absolute nightmare. He's howling, he's barking, he's crying. And then, of course, there's Teddy's favourite tactic. Oh, he's stolen a slipper. Oh, that's a good game of tug. 
That's a great reward for stealing. <laughs> and now he's being chased. Awesome. He's got you so well trained. He has. <laughs> to understand what makes this dog tick, <coughs> it's all about breeding. While Teddy's a Cavapuchon, his mum's a Cavachon. A cross between King Charles Spaniel and Bichon Frise. Meanwhile, Dad's a Cavapoo, aka Cavoodle, or even Cavadoodle, a cross between Spaniel and Poodle. Renowned for intelligence and a non shedding coat, these Poodle mixed breeds are popular and often expensive. Their character traits can vary wildly but they always have a lot of love to give. Even though Teddy's desperate not to be home alone, Victoria wants to see how he reacts when Mike and Jane go out. He's barking, he's jumping up at the door. And then he stops to listen, see is she coming back or not. Now he's beginning to pace. All of which really does suggest he's suffering from separation anxiety. This is pretty upsetting to see him like this. Oh, look at him. I'm sorry, I know it's hard for you to see. I'm upset because is this my doing? I mean, by me going back to work, I've essentially made this situation a million times worse. I've left the house and this is what's happened. Hey, Ted. What makes this all so distressing to watch? Hello. Is that if you could just tell the dog, it's going to be OK, they'll be home, but we can't. So now it's up to Victoria. Can she help Teddy to be the happy dog he used to be? What you're living with is a lot. Yeah. Separation anxiety, right, is a diagnosable disorder. There's a potential that he might need medication, but you need to have a vet behaviorist or a vet tell you about that. OK. Second thing, the stealing. There's a darker component to it. He really does panic when you go out. It's all connected. Lastly, the barking. He is very sound sensitive, so any little noise is going to trigger him. Yeah. And so when he hears a sound, he goes like this, runs towards it. The noises make Teddy even more anxious as he tries to work out if they're friend or foe. The thing is, he came at a time in your life where you were severely ill. He fulfilled a role for you, that of comfort. Yeah. Teddy was there for you all the time. Now, thank goodness, you're better. Yes. And you're transitioning. You're, you're getting your life back. Yeah. But he hasn't transitioned. No, he hasn't. I want to change Teddy's yeah. behaviour. Yeah. yeah. And I want you to work with me to help change that. The first thing Victoria wants to do is put an end to Teddy's life of crime. Ted, stop! Using a skill called take it and drop it. I love this game because dogs, it's just fun for them. Mm -hmm. well, what we're really teaching them to do is when you say drop it, their mouth opens and they'll do so. So there's not this confrontation you might have. All that's required, two dog-friendly okay. squeaky toys. I have this toy for him. I throw it to him. I let him investigate it. It squeaks. As he releases from his mouth, I say drop. As he takes it in his mouth, I say, take it. Drop it! <gasps> take it! Drop it! Take it! <laughs> Drop it! Good boy! She makes it look so easy and instantly Teddy was... Under her spell. <laughs> yeah, and she didn't have to do much. Drop it! <laughs> take it! Yes! Good boy! We thought, how was she doing that? Drop it. Take it. Yes, good boy. But does Mike have the magic touch? Squeak that. Tell me to drop it. Drop it. 
Tilly, drop and it. throw. <laughs> Apparently not. Do it again. Humans are slightly trickier to train than a cavapuchon. Drop it. Good. There you Good go. boy. Teddy, drop. Take it. Good. Well Good boy. done. Teddy. Teddy, drop. Take it. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was lovely to watch. It finally feels like I'm bonding with Teddy rather than just being the one that shouts at him or chases him to get stuff back. Take it. Perfect. Lovely. I want you to do this take it and drop it game with him for a couple of minutes twice a day. OK. Yeah. Okay. With a way to save their footwear from Teddy's clutches, Victoria's next challenge <laughs> is the barking. This training is going to help cut through what he's barking at so that he can run right back to you. I call it the back and forth game and it's just all centered around fun. You say Teddy here, and then when Teddy is with you and he's eaten the little treat that he's going to get, you then say Teddy here, and then you're going to go backwards and forwards, OK? Backwards and forwards. Designed to lower Teddy's stress levels, this simple strategy... Call Teddy, Teddy to you now. here. ..pulls Teddy's focus away from noises back on Jane and Mike. Lovely. Now, Mike. Teddy here. And drop food on the ground. Good. Very nice. Tell him good boy. Good boy. You call? Teddy here. Teddy here. Don't look at him. Ignore. Teddy here. Yes. Oh, yes, this is a fun game, but it's also going to enrich his life. And we find that barkers, they need a bit more enrichment. Teddy here. Nice. When you call, say, Teddy here. Yes, good. <laughs> <laughs> he likes it. He does. Make it high, OK? Because then he's going to be like, oh, that's more exciting for him. Mike, you've got to find that voice somewhere. After a little practice... Teddy! <laughs> both Jane and Mike are happily going up a few octaves. Oh. Teddy! Here! <laughs> I don't think he's ever heard that voice from you before. I haven't either. <laughs> and you haven't? <laughs> <laughs> And soon, Teddy's no longer barking at his usual triggers. <gasps> Teddy, here! Oh, nice. Oh, good beautiful boy. reaction. Good oh, boy. he was looking at that bird. He so wanted to bark, and you got him. Good boy! <laughs> it's, it's unreal, the influence and the impact that she has. Yeah. Straight away. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? You got Sluffy. That's all it is. We just got to play more with our dogs. Teddy absolutely smashed it. It was awesome. It's such a simple thing to do, and it's blown my mind completely. The biggest challenge facing Teddy is separation anxiety. With lockdown ending and many dog owners going back to work, it's a common problem. But it can also be brought on by moving house or the loss of another family pet. Classic signs include reacting to noises, loss of appetite and destructive behaviours. As for reducing a dog's anxiety, that starts with creating a safe and quiet space. Naturally, Victoria has just the thing. I want to introduce specially designed bioacoustic music to discharge the dog's nervous system. I'm going to play a little bit of it for you now. By using a single instrument and removing the higher frequencies, Bioacoustic music has been proven to reduce anxiety in both dogs and cats. It is the music that you're going to use to build up a positive association for Teddy. OK. I can't believe that he's this relaxed. Yes, yeah, he's usually on edge or on guard. I thought there is no way that my dog is going to lie down and go to sleep it was so relaxing, I nearly went to sleep myself. This is the first step to separation anxiety training. You're going to use the music 
whenever you're just hanging out and he feels safe so that when he does hear it, when you're away, it's connected to you. The second step is helping Teddy to cope with Jane and Mike leaving the house. The door that is such a, just a flashpoint for him. Normally when you go out the front door, you're gone. But this time, Jane's gonna come out the front door, shut it, wait for a second, and then go back in. Changing the picture for him. Okay. And she's going to keep on doing it, though gradually she'll wait longer before returning. Okay, back in. I don't hear barking. Teddy's probably just going. What's happening? Okay. Let's leave it three seconds now. Good. Well done. This doesn't seem like a lot, but this is the start of a long road, each time building up just a few seconds. And I would love it if, in a month's time, you got up to five minutes. I mean, that's how slow it is. Good boy. We actually got to four seconds today. Oh, wow. That, for a dog that has this kind of anxiety, is pretty significant. I want you to get to five minutes. Doesn't seem like a lot, does it? No. Yeah. But it turns into 10, 45, an hour. OK. And afterwards, Teddy gets to listen to his newfound favourite song. Everything that I've put into practice, whether it be for the barking, the stealing or the separation anxiety, it all links together. Victoria's a million percent living up to her name. Yeah. She's just taught us so much in, in such a sh short period of time. It's... I'm lost for words, it, really. Yes, you, you've got to see it to believe it. Yeah. Well, good luck. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I've set you on the path. Yep. Now you've got to run with it. Yeah. OK? Thank you. Will do. All right, and I will see you soon. See you, see you soon. soon. Over the next few weeks, Jane and Mike put Victoria's techniques into practice and can't believe the changes in Teddy. Go fetch. Good boy. Teddy, drop. Drop. Go fetch. It's unreal. If he steals and we leave a shoe or a slipper, we don't have the battle that we had before trying to get the slipper back or the shoe. It's, you know, we grab a toy, put this game into motion and it's, it's almost straight away. It'll drop. And as for this little problem... Teddy here! Teddy! Here! We can now control him mid-bark 90% of the time. Yeah. Teddy, here! <laughs> Good boy. Just like Doesn't that. Matter. Prior to Victoria coming here, he wouldn't have stopped barking then. He would have carried on and on and on. So, slowly but surely, Jane's being granted her release from doggy prison. When I leave the house, he doesn't bark for as long. So for me, that is a massive thumbs up. First time ever, I feel now that we're in a place where Teddy will have a future in our house. From my point of view, it's definitely me and the dog. It's so wonderful to see a dog that was so anxious, feeling so much better. Yes, Teddy had a lot of issues. Barking, stealing, separation anxiety, but Wow, what a difference. Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site, Positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. I'll see you online.